My name is uh, Sandrine Amr. I am uh, a Palestinian, a Jerusalemite, a Christian living in Jerusalem. I'm uh, working uh, for the last 10 years as the Young Women Christian Association of Jerusalem Director, YWCA. We provide diplomas to young women and young men, uh, a one-year program, uh, vocational and technical trainings. So we provide the alternative education. We seek highly to do much employability activities, uh, developing their CV, boosting their character and interpersonal skills. So we try to provide a career to develop their life our career lives. For females, it's also the same, unfortunately. Mostly, uh, whether school dro uh, dropouts happens also because of the norms and traditions uh, related to gender, and that women get early marriage uh, association, unfortunately, that leads, in many cases, to divorce that leads to poor health condition for the young ladies when they are not yet mature with their bodies. And this leads to social problems. And this leads to family violence. And we don't have really a good system to support the women and the individuals from this family violence. We have high percentage of family violence towards women and young ladies and girls. In Palestine, um, it's not acceptable to go and seek shelter elsewhere. You belong to this patriarchal system. You belong to a family. It's shameful. And in East Jerusalem, it's more specific and more unique. Why? Because it's the occupation. It's the Israeli occupation who's managing the system. And if you go and seek shelter with the Israeli occupation system, uh, it's not safe, so there's no really a good shelter system for the girls. Even if you go into the Palestinian context to the uh, government officials, are they really gender aware? They're not. The masculinity is dominant. We are a male dominant society. The woman is the most tangible in many cases of the violations of the Israeli occupier, such as the cases of evictions from homes, such as the house demolitions, the gender-based attacks, the lack of services and protection, and the residency rights. There are some attack and systematic attack on the uh, Palestinian uh, women organizations. We've witnessed that the last two years in specific against CEDAW and against, uh, and against the women organizations working uh, to promote gender equity. Yet the issue of women and young girls cannot be solved without the end of occupation. Because we are economically dependent on Israel, on the occupier. Therefore, we will continue to have high number of unemployability and poverty. Of course, every uh, female and every woman and activist and woman organization. We look forward to a democratic Palestinian state, a free one with no occupation. We look forward to a secular state mm -hmm. that accepts and promotes diversity, that 
accepts and promotes gender equity and doesn't differentiate between the rights of the male and the female. We look forward to active political participation. Of course, the political participation within the Palestinian context is very humble. It's around 10 to 12 percent into the main bodies of the Palestinian uh, decision maker. There is one governor, female governor, out of 16 governors. Despite the fact that females consist 49% of the total population. We see the involvement of women in around 45% in the public spheres and private. But, say the civil society, 45%. But only around 16% are those with the position of general director. Because we don't perceive women as equal in decision making, as equal in rights of her wage, as equal in representation. We implement within the uh, women program many gender-based uh, violence uh, awareness programs on the rights, duties, responsibilities of me as a citizen, of me as a female youth. And then we try to ad identify also the problems that are surrounding us in relation to gender-based violence. We do that in the participatory approach so that they can feel the ownership of the cause that after that they would advocate for. And we try to provide a platform to the youth and uh, girls to make their voice heard, to advocate for their causes, and have a safe space for them for discussion. We also try to build awareness among women to study, to work, and not seek early marriage. Within the uh, cooperation with Alancia per la Solidar, in 2016, we implemented a project. It was about gender-based violence. And the second one was implemented in Shuafat refugee camp. We worked with a group of uh, young women and, co and women community centers on the awareness about rights, responsibilities and duties of us as individuals and community centers as well. We gave trainings on advocacy, campaigning, lobbying, and then we implemented two campaigns, very bold campaigns regarding our traditional uh, norms. One was the elimination of all forms of uh, early marriage. Uh, in Palestine, the early marriage percentage is almost 40%. And in Jerusalem, it's similar. And sexual harassment, gender-based sexual harassment. And that's not something acceptable to address and speak publicly. For the sexual harassment uh, matter, we also uh, the ladies uh, met uh, with uh, the manager of the public transportation and complained about uh, certain hours and certain passengers who really plan to harass girls and uh, requested a procedure that should be followed 
by the bus drivers whenever there is something happening in regards to sexual harassment. So now, also through project from Alancia Perla Solidar and funded by the Generalitat, we are also implementing similar uh, trainings, awareness, advocacy uh, to promote non-discriminatory uh, or the elimination of discrimination uh, towards uh, women. But we are doing that. We did a masculinity training three years ago with school dropouts and it had its impact. We try to connect it with other programs to attract people uh, to join this course as not to have it as a sole training, but we attract it with, for example, technical training. And that was successful. And now, as we're speaking, we have also a masculinity training in Jerusalem, and we are connecting it to drama because we try to use alternative tools in dealing with youth and women to discuss uh, gender-based issues. We use drama, we use art, we use dance and music. As you know, we have witnessed, like two weeks ago, the classification of six human rights organizations that are working in the West Bank, and they were classified by Israel as terrorists. This is a pure example of what I'm just saying. The civil society in Palestine has a huge impact, has a vital role. And for us, as NGOs, as individuals, to continue working, to continue seeking support, we need the collaboration and the cooperation of the international community. We need the international community to acknowledge not only our rights of existence, but our right to end this occupation. Thank you.